Welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about relaxing the face and how at a pivotal moment this can make a humongous difference in changing your meditation from a relaxing meditation to a profound meditation. Two of my very, very deep students have brought this up to me, so I want to explain how we can do this and why it works so profoundly, how it ties into the polyvagal theory and directly into the central nervous system. So let's get into it. So there are two primary places in our meditation where we can concentrate on relaxing the face. One is at the very beginning. Before we sit down, we can, or as we sit down to meditate, we can begin to relax the jaw. So this is a primary point right here. And then, so I'm right at the corner of the jawline right here just put your thumb in there and just dig around a little bit oh it feels great and then move right up here there's so many muscles in the forehead right around here right around the temple and so you're doing a little bit of self massage before you get into meditation and when we are concentrated in our lives we crease the brows and we bring these two frontalis bones together so you can pull them apart a little bit. Just pull them apart. Just pull apart the two frontalis bones right here. Just pull them apart. It feels like you're pulling apart your brain. It's just so nice. <laughs> and then go up into the scalp and massage the scalp. Get back here in the area of the occipital and just massage the occipital. Oh my God, it's delicious. There's so many muscles going up into around your scalp. So you're not massaging, <laughs> you're not massaging the skull. You are massaging all of those muscle connections that go up into the scalp. And all of these muscles climb up and attach right here at the occipital. So if you spend five minutes massaging those, the ends of those muscles in the occipital, you'll find a tremendous relaxation will come down through the shoulders. Now around the eyes, we use our eyes so much and all the muscles around the eye assist. So you go under the eye, just move it back and forth on the sides. Oh my God, it's so good. Up here, into your eyebrows, just move those around. <laughs> I'm gonna go wash my hands. When your hands are clean, experiment with this point. This comes from cranial sacral therapy. And if you've never tried it out, go find a reputable, good reviewed cranial sacral therapist and try it out. It's so amazing. So you're gonna reach straight back between the jaw. So right here, where the jaw separates, you're gonna open the jaw and put your finger straight into it. Oh, you're just pressing right straight back. It feels like you're pushing on the jaw, but there's musculature back there. And it's heavenly. Then try the other side, just straight back into the point of the jaw. It's delicious. It's amazing. Now I'm gonna go wash my hand again. All of those points, all of those massage points 
have a tremendous value in relaxation. So you'll go to a cranial sacral therapist and they'll do a lot of this. They're looking for the points between the bones and all of the ends of the musculature and relaxing everything, realigning the pieces of the skull, realigning the cervical vertebrae especially. And what they find is when all of that is aligned correctly and relaxed and operating in a functional way, then magical things immediately transpire through the whole body. So you fix the head and the body follows. Now, why would that be? Because you have a ventral vagal from the stomach up through the front of the body, straight into the face. And that's why when we have feelings in our gut, <clears throat> it comes right up into the face. And that's how you can read people. So that's a bit of mind reading. So as soon as the emotion comes, it goes boom into the face. So the polyvagal people, they talk about how the ventral vagal is myelinated for speed. It's just boom, it's right there. Whereas the dorsal vagal, is very old, very ancient. And that's why we like it as yogis. It's very, very ancient and very slow. It's a little bit slow. Whereas the ventral vagal is boom, now. <laughs> because when something happens and you don't feel right, you have to react immediately, very, very fast. And that's why when we feel a feeling, whether it's fear or hurt or anger down in the gut or jealousy, it just Boom, it comes right up into the face immediately. That's because that's where it goes. So when you do massage on the face and the skull, it will immediately have an effect through the whole body. And that's what cranial sacral therapy is based on. It's based on that front channel that the Tai Chi and the Taoists talk about. That's the ventral vagal right there. And in the chakra system, we use both the front and the back of the chakras. And so we're using the ventral vagal in the front and the dorsal vagal in the back of the chakra. And sometimes we start in the front and we move our way to the back. And that's very, very healthy because you're cleaning out all of that content. If you're ohming through the front, getting to the back. Sometimes we just ohm from the back like a little Pac-Man on the back side. And it's just beautiful because a little more quickly you will find bliss that way through the back side. Yet if you do it through the front, you might find that you get more clear. So both are very, very appropriate and helpful to the yogi, the Om Japa Yogi. <laughs> so that's why it works so well. It has to do with the ventral vagal. Now, once you have, let's say you've done some stretching, right? And then you sat down in your meditative posture. Maybe you did a little bit of self-massage. Maybe you, you tense the body a little bit and then relax and then tense and then relax just to help get yourself down into that relaxed state. Now, some yogis will have to be careful with this, like me, because if you do it too much, the body gets charged and you feel a little bit of that energy and then you don't feel like you're in a meditative space anymore. So watch out for that. But a little bit can be very helpful to relax the body. And it's so simple and yet the effects in your meditation moving forward are very profound. And then, of course, the most profound thing we can do is the heart rate variability, resonant breathing, lowering the heart rate, lowering the breath rate, making it very nice and long, under seven breaths per minute, right? Make sure you have that resonant breathing app in your phone and you can try it out on your phone. It's a wonderful way to begin. It's, it's actually the most powerful way on the face of the planet that you can begin meditation. Now you can go further from there, but it's such a profound way to begin. It's clinical and it works every single time. 
So I've done a little bit of stretching, I've done a little bit of the heart rate variability resonance, and now I've done a little bit of the Om Chapa in the chakras, and now I'm really just about the B. I did the do, and now I want to be the B in the meditation. Like that video I did, the do, B, do, B, do meditation. So I'm at the B portion, and I just want to relax. I just want to enjoy the little bit of bliss and tranquility that I have built up through the processes of meditation that I've been using. So I'm very, very quiet. I'm sitting very still. I'm very relaxed. The heart rate is down because I've done heart rate variability resonance. The breath is long and I just let go and I just be. And in that moment, I want to relax as profoundly as possible. And so I'm going to look, I'm going to scan my face, and first I'm going to relax the jaw, then I'm going to relax the forehead, then I'm going to relax around the eyes. For the very old hypnotists, this was one of the first instructions that they would do. And they found that the person they were working with for hypnotherapy or for stage hypnosis, they found that the person would immediately relax so profoundly because they were relaxing the face. So you fix the ventral vagal and the rest of the body follows. So by letting go of that pressure that was built up in the face, so we're in our daily life, right? And we're going around and we're up in our face and we're right out here. And everything is about our face. Everything is, everything is here in our face, right? All of this is right here in the face. So you're inching back from that and you are relaxing. So imagine, relax the forehead. Where does it go? You go back like this into the medulla. I relax around the eyes. Where do I go? I go back into my medulla. I relax my jaw. I relax around the ears. I relax the whole skull. And where do I feel myself going? I'm pulling myself back to the medulla. And I can do this stepwise. Relax, step back. Relax, step back. Relax, step back. And I just feel like I am walking myself back into the medulla. You see? Right here in the center. Right here. Put that, feel that screw in the center of your skull. Imagine that your neck, at the top of your neck, there's a little screw. It's screwing into the skull. That's the medulla. Feel that screw going into the skull, that's the medulla. And I'm just drawing everything back to that point, stepwise, one step at a time, relaxing all of the face. So try that out. That is a profound exercise of relaxation. Now we set it up, right? We did the stretching. We did the heart rate variability. We did the Om Japa in the chakras. And then we're sitting very still. We're just relaxing, letting go, just being and enjoying. And that's when we step back. Relax, step back, enjoy. Relax, step back, enjoy. Relax, step back, enjoy. Over and over again. And you will feel yourself retreating from the ventral vagal. So we're up here in the world, we're out and ready to express, and now we're stepping back, and stepping back, and stepping back, and where are we going? To the dorsal vagal, that yogi's friend. Now, if you study some of the polyvagal theory, and you listen to the polyvagal therapists, they're very invested into the ventral vagal because it fits with the therapy that they are doing. They are cleaning out the issues in the ventral vagal and making a clear expression of it and then enjoying the beautiful parasympathetic expression of the ventral vagal, which would be the perfect expression would be a beautiful loving moment with your family and you're having a dinner together. You're all enjoying in front of you, you see? And so they say, this beautiful expression, this is meditation. 
and I say you have a tiny portion of the meditation but as a yogi all of our practices are leading us back to the dorsal vagal and they say no 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 that can't be because the dorsal vagal is freeze and we say yes when it is healthy, when you're doing it on purpose, when the ventral vagal is clear and you go back and you use the dorsal vagal, it is absolutely blissful and delicious. And you're missing out on that because you're afraid of the freeze because you have some patients who have retreated from the ugly stuff in the ventral vagal and they have retreated from it into the dorsal vagal and they're just frozen in place with junk in the front and freeze in the back and that's unhealthy that's an unhealthy expression right so you have to clean out the ventral vagal you have to have an easy flow in your life and then retreat back into the dorsal vagal and that's what the kriya yogi is doing with the om japa in the chakras and lowering the heart rate and the breath rate and using the dorsal vagal for bliss and the deep, beautiful freeze response over and over again. So try that out and see if you can retreat more and more into that dorsal vagal, away from the ventral vagal, and right at that, that one point when you've already done everything else and then you try this out. It's so simple, right? I'm just relaxing and stepping back. That's all it is. But because you've set yourself up correctly, it will blow your mind how beautiful and deep it is. And when you get into, oh God. <laughs> and when you get into the freeze response, you may notice the tranquil breath begins to show up as well. The chest begins to freeze. The breath goes down in low in the belly and you have this very shallow, breath coming almost like you're sipping through a straw I've heard people say <laughs> and that is the beautiful tranquil breath which I talk a lot about on the tranquil breath training on my website so if you haven't seen that you definitely want to check that out and make sure you understand the tranquil breath and you can recognize it when it shows up because the tranquil breath and the freeze response go hand in hand so if you have one, you probably have the other. So if you have the freeze response, you probably have the tranquil breath. And if you have the tranquil breath, you probably have some of the freeze response because they go like this. They go hand in hand. So I hope that you love this. If you did, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you next time.